This is a post-trade analysis for a gold trade that I took this morning, which started off as a scalp. And now I have a runner uh, active for it at the moment and turned into a day trade, eventually trying to turn it into a swing opportunity. From a fundamental perspective, there are a couple of things that helped me prepare for this trade. The very first thing was the news leading up to Biden's speech today about his $2.25 trillion infrastructure bill. Specifically, I was looking at the sentiment surrounding the tax hikes. So whenever you increase taxes on corporate income, the corporations are going to look for alternatives that are a little bit more tax friendly for them. And so the president wants to increase taxes, the corporate income tax to 28% which is leading to market uncertainty and also some market fear. So similar to the previous bill, which was eventually passed with some modifications, I'm expecting the same exact thing to happen in the Senate again, some modifications of this bill and specifically the tax hike portion. Second fundamental was the update on Johnson & Johnson vaccine. They had a manufacturing error at one of their plants involving the COVID-19 vaccine production affecting 15 million doses. So as we know, for any economy to open up right now, whether it's a major economy like the UK, US, EU, or Japan, or any developing economy as well, they need to have enough vaccine supplies for their population in order to move towards that economic growth. And so this mix up in their factory is going to cause a delay in deliveries, which is going to cause a little bit of a uh, slowdown in their economic recovery here as well. The third thing was Germany entering another lockdown in addition to a couple of EU member states as well, a new COVID variant being detected in Brazil and also talks about a potential lockdown in Australia as well. So those were a couple of fundamentals that helped me prepare for this gold trade. And also tomorrow and Friday, we're going to see manufacturing PMI and NFP coming out. So we have the market setting up for that as well at the moment. So that was a fundamental side from a technical perspective. I started off with the yearly time frame, right into that 16, about 1665 area, which was that resistance made in 2013 when we started seeing stronger macro fundamentals coming out, reflecting some uh, economic recovery from the 2008 financial crisis. Specifically, we have the zone right here. So you have a lot of wakeouts and resistance being formed. So this, this year we tapped into that area making a bottom with rejection. And as we drop down to lower time frames we see that the support zone is being respected. So same thing on the quarterly time frame, making a bottom with rejection and just started a new quarter here. On the monthly time frame, same exact thing. And as we drop down to lower time frames, we can definitely adjust these zones and levels as well. I started adjusting this level on the daily time frame, but one thing that I did notice on the weekly time frame is price is currently still respecting this 1745 resistance from this weekly consolidation. So we're following some variation of the same exact price action that we saw back here in this consolidation, still rejecting uh, about 1680 mark. So we could move this and then move this up a little bit to 1680, where the candles don't really close below 1680 on the weekly and daily time frame, but they keep rejecting it as a support level. Same thing on the daily time frame. We don't really close below it. We, we just keep uh, respecting 1680 as a support. Another thing is on the daily time frame, you have this consolidation support being formed right here, and then a nice meltdown on March 29th, so earlier this week, which is that 1725. And that is my target level for this runner that I have at the moment. On the four hour time frame, we see some consolidation forming right into this level. So as I drop down to the uh, to the lower time frames, I wanted to see a candle close above the zone and a bottom with rejection or a break and retest for me to take an entry here. We go down to the two hour time frame, pretty much adjusting this level or this zone 
where we have this average area of consolidation. You have a little bit of a fake out where the candle does close below 1680, but it fails to continue bearish. And we come right back into that area, start consolidating here again, where the candles, they start losing their volume. So now same exact thing, when I drop down to the 30 minute time frame or the 15 minute time frame, I'm looking for a retracement and candles closing above this zone and then following candles making a bottom with projection to continue bullish. On the 30 minute, we do close above that area, but it's a doji, so it's not enough confirmation for me. So the following candle, I'm looking for a bottom with rejection and then continuation back bullish. And this is when we when I dropped down to the 15 minute time frame and ended up taking my entry here. So on the 15 minute time frame, I waited for price to break 1690. That 1690 level. So then we can clear out this break and retest resistance and also clear out this minor resistance that price has been making with this break and retest and also this consolidation level here. So right about here, so that consolidation resistance, that break and retest resistance, and also that top with rejection right there. So when price closed above 1690, I waited for the next candle to make a bottom with rejection and then continue bullish. And that's when I end up taking my entry at 1691.36, take profit 1725, stop loss 1687.5, giving me just over 8 to 1 risk to reward. As price continued bullish, I started identifying some minor levels. So since I entered this trade with a smaller lot size than I usually would with this um, setup, instead of taking partials, I just trailed my stop loss when price made a break and retest here. So I trailed my stop loss and I'll just use this line here. I trailed my stop loss just below this zone to 16.96 flat. So 1696 flat, and then as price made that break and retest to continue bullish, I, start, I started targeting some other levels that I could see price reacting off of, which was this consolidation area right about here. So after this consolidation area, when price made that break and retest, it was quite a bullish move. And so I was expecting price to come back down or consolidate or something like that before it taps into this next consolidation resistance up top here into 1714. So at this point, when the candle right here closed bearish, I took my first scale, uh, scale out for my first partial at 1709.06. And then price continued and I ended up taking another partial as price tapped into uh, the 1714 level. So that was the next partial level that I had determined as price was pushing bullish. Ended up taking at 1714.33. So right above that resistance, price came back down, it's consolidating, and we're coming right back into that consolidation area like the last time. So right into this area here. Now with the PMI news tomorrow and also NFP on Friday, I wanna see if price is going to continue bullish and ultimately tap into 1725, or is price just going to consolidate here, respecting 1714 and then come right back down. So after the first, uh, first trail stop loss, after taking my partials at 1714, I've moved my trailed stop loss right underneath the zone. So it's currently sitting around 1705 level right above this break and retest. So if price does come back down and break below this consolidation, the chances are we're probably gonna come back down to revisit uh, 1695 to 1690 level.